Hi, I'm Phil Hayday Brown. I'm the race director of the Spine Race in the UK and for the Arctic Spine in Sweden. So for 20 years, I've been uh, doing polar expeditions, uh, organizing races in the polar regions. And the kit that you're going to see through these videos are amongst the kit I've been using over the years. And, you know, it's all worked for me and hopefully it'll work for you. Okay, so we're in the Arctic Spine Workshop and I'm going to start with clothing and with uh, with all the systems you're going to need. There's many systems, so you have a head system, you have a hand system, and you have a feet system, and then the rest of the body. Uh, and I'm going to start with hands. So we have all the gloves here. Don't let it scare you. You don't have to use everything all at the same time. This is meant to be a choice thing. Everyone's different, so people travel differently at different heats and different speeds. But this is the kind of kit that you're gonna potentially need, especially if it gets down to minus 40. So starting at the far end, like I say, this is all the system and you have liner gloves. So thin liner gloves, it can also be known as contact gloves, um, which means when it's really cold, anything metal, and you put your bare hand onto it, you're gonna stick to it and that's instant frostbite. So you wear thin liner gloves when you're touching anything metal in the tent, when you're setting up stoves, that kind of stuff. And the only thing when things warm up is when you can take these off. So that's your, that's your liner gloves. Um, and then you have these things. Now, not everyone likes using these. These are called wristlets. And they basically just go on your arm like that um, on top of your liner gloves. And they keep this bit of your, your arm warm. Obviously, this keeping this warm is quite important because this is where all the blood goes down to your hands. So if this gets cold, your hands get cold. So keeping that keeping that warm is quite good. Then you've got a number of different options. Uh, so this is kind of your mainstay. You'd wear those most of the time. And then these these are kind of my working traveling gloves, and they're a thin thin leather glove. But above these, they 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 work quite well. Um, but also these are quite handy because they have a little bit of insulation that comes out and covers the fingers. So instead of whacking on a big mitt, then you just put that over and that's quite, quite handy and very effective, especially when it's, when it's dry and cold. Then you're moving up and you've got a choice. So I, I like using kind of claw type, type mitts and these can be used on their own. So depending on what the weather's doing, when I say on their own, you always got your contact gloves on. But you don't need to be wearing those all the time. And those, so you can wear these and these, or those and just a standard mitt. Yeah. Good to, to travel in. Um, also, very similar to that, it's just a preference whether you like claw or that. This gives you a little bit more dexterity, kind of by picking things up and whatnot other than a big fat mitt. So worth having a look at, at those. Also, these things, like being a kid, you know, these go up your arm so you can take them off and they can just dangle. So you, you don't have to worry about them. So if your hands get too hot, you can just slip them off and you don't have to put them in your bag all the time or in your pocket. They can just dangle there. And most of these mitts will have that kind of thing on them. Then you get your big fat mitts. So your happy mitts, as we call them. Um, and these go on. If you're getting really cold hands, then, you know, put your big happy bits on and you'll soon find your warm up and then you can reduce again to the, the smaller mitts. And then at the end here, we have an over mitt. If it does get wet, um, these go over everything, basically. They can go over your big happy mitt, they can go over these or these or even these. So, you know, it's good to have a, a waterproof over mitt there. So that's kind of your, your hand system. Um, I will now move on to the head system over here. Let's talk about the head system. Um, so this is actually quite complex and complicated because like I said before with the hands, everyone's different. <clears throat> but as a basic, you've got to basically have most of what's, what's on show here. Uh, first of all, we go with the hat. And 
I travel really hot, so I always wear just a skinny little, it's just a skinny little cotton hat that goes on, uh, and that tends to do me kind of most of the time. Uh, there is another style, there's kind of a, a windproofy style there as well. Um, I find that probably a bit too hot. And then you've got your, your normal woolly hat, which when it starts to get really cold, that can go over, not over the top of this. So this is not a layering thing. So that would come off and that would go on. Uh, or if it's that warm, then you've got your headband. And basically what you're looking to do with all of this is to cover the ears as well as, as the head. So the ears are very um, prone to getting frostbite. Thin, thin part of skin on top of your ear especially so that's what you need to be covering all the time so whatever hat you choose just make sure it covers the ears then you've got uh, uh, a buff or a chief um, and this goes on around the neck like a neck gaiter and this can be used uh, to cover the to cover the mouth as well it can be pulled up it can go over the head I'll demonstrate that in a minute but that's uh, that's what that is you get different kinds though there's the thin material kind with a bit of fleece on the end or there's a thicker one which is two layers fleece layer and a thin material layer both doing the same job um, then there's a balaclava so when it's when it's really chilly and you want to cover up everything then the balaclava goes on um, and also you can put a, a hat on top of that uh, but or you can just wear it as a balaclava on its own um, and then we have a face mask. This is one style of face mask. Uh, and this just covers this part and allows you to breathe freely inside, which is why it's got this cup on there. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of face masks out there. Uh, and then we've got eyes. The really important bit about the eyes, especially when traveling over snow and ice, is nine times out of 10, you've always got to have some protection, whether it be goggles or sunglasses. So sunglasses are, are a must but then you've got your goggles as well. And I always carry two pairs of goggles because goggles steam up. You know, they're, they're very easy to steam up. So once they steam up, you take them off, you stick them in your, in your coat, then you get your other goggles out, you put those on. And when they steam up, you just swap them around and it works quite well, so you can keep going. And on this pair of goggles, I have a little bit of material which will cover the nose. So if you don't want to wear about a clava or pull up a buff over your nose, then you just wear this with a little bit of material that will cover the nose and the cheeks. And that will be good as well. So that's kind of the head system. Stuff at the end here. This is the fur ruff, and this goes on the hood of the jacket you'll be wearing. And this, once pulled up and pulled around, it creates a little microclimate for your face. So if you've got that up and it's windy and you've got it around, you don't generally have to, to wrap up too much there, unless, of course, it's right in your face. So that's, uh, that's that. Okay, so feet, the most important part of your armory. Uh, and again, it's another system. So we're going to start with socks. And we have basic liner socks, which uh, obviously go on the bare feet. Then you have the, the thick sock. Now you don't want anything like stupidly thick. You're just looking for a nice padded trekking sock that will, will go over the liner sock. Um, and then there's always waterproof socks if, if you're used to using them. Problem with those is the feet can get quite sweaty and hot and nasty in there. And the sock itself can get a bit waterlogged um, from the inside out. So, but, uh, I'll come on to that in a bit. So we also have vapor barrier liners. So as with the hands that I described with the glove system, the feet system, you have the similar thing. And there are different kinds of vapor barrier liners. You can get just your, your normal waterproof sack there. That will do the job. You get kind of military Gore-Tex ones. Um, and then you can get your kind of cycling Gore-Tex ones as well. Uh, also, what you can use, uh, which I used when I did my South Pole race, is standard plastic bags from the supermarket. Um, so when we were prepping in Cape Town, 
we decided that we'd need paper barrier liners and we hadn't brought anyone any with us. So we went to the local supermarket, grabbed a handful of carry bags, and that lasted us the trip. So you don't have to go to a massive expense, but obviously these last a lot longer um, and they're more comfortable. And the way you wear them, <clears throat> so you'd put your liner sock on, then you'd put your vapor barrier on over your liner sock. Uh, so the only thing that's going to get any kind of damp and wet from sweat are going to be your thin liner socks, which are very easy to dry. So if you didn't do this, you'd be having to dry out your thin socks, your thick socks, and your boots. So your boots get wet as well from the sweat coming out. So that is the main reason for the both barrier liners. So very important for the kit. So, so that's that. For your feet then, you've obviously got your boots to go over the top. There's lots of different kinds of boots out there and you need the boots that are going to fit the ski binding. So the two typical ski bindings that people use for cross-country skiing are the Triple N BC, that's a backcountry binding, and this is the kind of boot you'll need for that. It's got the bar on the front, I'll demonstrate the binding in a minute, um, and it's slightly insulated boot. It doesn't need to be massively insulated because you're doing a lot of work in them. And then you get your uh, Rockefeller three-pin uh, a NATO binding like that, it's like a duck bill at the front, and that uh, also works in the same thing. <clears throat> so they work with a loose heel, and uh, they're both slightly insulated boots. So, so tent life is a bit different. So what you do, end of the day, you've you've skied all day, you've got hot feet, sweaty feet, take them off, you dry out your line of socks, you powder your feet, dry, well, clean your feet, powder them, and then you put them in your tent booties for, for tent life. So there's different kinds of tent booties. You get this kind with a padded sole. So you put those on your nice, fresh powdered feet and all just normal kind of down socks like this. But it's just about staying warm in the tent with the feet. Plus you can go outside in these if you need, a, if you need to go outside at all. So that's, that's your feet there. Um, <clears throat> Moving up a little bit, they've also got your gaiter, which when you're going through deep snow, it just stops everything from, from coming down into your boot and getting wet from the outside in. So a gaiter, or if on your salad pets you have a snow gaiter, that kind of thing will do as well. And what could be handy uh, on this trip, on this race, is uh, overboots. So waterproof overboots or overflow boots. And they, they it's a full kind of overboot, which will go over the whole thing and we'll waterproof the whole thing just in case you go through and get a bit of a bit of water when you're crossing any rivers or lakes okay so we're going to look at the the full body layering system uh from from the base layer up and we'll, we'll start with a good standard thin base layer so there my my long johns if you like and then i've got a good base layer top and that basically is what you never take off if it's minus 30s minus 40s you don't want to be taking that stuff off so if you don't want to have a wash you just get inside and you have a little, little wash inside i also not everyone does but i do i wear knee pads over my um base layer leggings these are specifically for Kneeling down in the snow or ice, and it's to do with tent work. So you do a lot of kneeling down when you're in your tent or when you put your tent up or when you put your tent away. And when it's really cold and you're on ice, you can get frostbitten knees. So a good set of uh, knee pads are good, but it's not for everyone. So that's just something I do. Um, and then we come to the next layer. So it's a mid layer. And again, this is what I do. Generally, I have a, a thin fleece layer as my as my next layer up for my legs uh, or you can just wear a pair of trekking trousers nice heavy duty trekking trousers um, but like I say I wear the thin fleece um, I find it a lot easier to, to move in um, so upper body again we've got a couple of mid layer options so I've got fleece which is not windproof but you know it's nice nice and warm can can hold the heat um, so you know there are times for that or I have this one, which is obviously um, insulated jacket, and it is uh, it's windproof as well. So that's kind of you know I could be travelling in that and 
that and that's it on the top um you know ignoring the shell maybe depending on on the weather but then we've got the typical heavy duty shell not not a lightweight um trekking jacket uh, you know it's a it's a really heavy duty three layer gore-tex jacket there um and then i always wear salopettes so i've got a nice pair of salopettes here i just find when it comes up higher gives you that more protection if you're always just around the waist there uh, they can come down and you've got to tighten them up to come up so these i find very very handy when you've got the, the straps that go over the shoulders to, to keep them up and again heavy duty uh, materials there because they will get some some rough use in the cold and then on top of everything you've got your big fat down jacket go over the top of everything so this is this is the the, the principle of layering obviously you don't have to wear it all you can mix and match uh, where where needed and when you're when you're managing the heat and you're managing the moisture that you're building up uh, it's about you know taking bits off and putting bits on when it's needed. Arctic Spine Race, entries are open, book a call with myself and let's make this happen.